who talks to you more than any other person. Who talks to you more than any other person. Meaning, who do you hear, who do you listen to more than any other? Who talks to you more, meaning who do you hear more than any other? The answer is the same. You talk to yourself more than any other person. And you listen, you hear yourself, the things you say to yourself more than any other. Now, what are you saying to yourself? What are you hearing yourself say? Do you speak to yourself truth? Truth that gives you joy and gladness in Christ. Do you speak to yourself biblical truth? Or do you speak to yourself that which is poison and destructive? Spiritual deadly. What we say to ourselves, that which we think affects the way we live. What we say to ourselves, what we hear ourselves say to us, affects the way we live. This is a great letter that God gives us through Peter. Peter is writing those who are in crisis, difficulty, and hard times. We know that from the context. He calls them exiles. They're foreigners in a strange land. They are really going through crisis. They've left their homes. They've left their employment. Homes have been stolen, business. They're called exiles, strangers. They're running for their life because of their faith in Christ and faithfulness to Christ. They're going through crisis, extreme difficulty, and hard times. And Peter's writing them a letter. It's not just Peter writing them. This is the Holy Spirit using Peter. And what God is saying to them through their hard times, difficulty, and crisis is this. You may experience rejoicing with joy. That's what he's saying. We see that from the scriptures. Let's see the the context of these verses upon which we will focus today. Look at... 1 Peter 1.8, 1 Peter 1.8, just above what we're seeing today, Peter says these words through the Holy Spirit. You're going through crisis, difficulty, hard times, really hard times. Though you have not seen him being Jesus Christ, you, you haven't seen him, yet you're loving him. To love means more than an emotion. It's more than an emotion. It's behavior. Jesus says if you love him, you will obey his commandments. So it's action. It's behavior. You've not seen him, but yet you're obeying him. And though you're not seeing him now, you're not seeing Christ. Family, I remind you. We do not need visions of Jesus Christ. You do not need a dream. We have all we need to know about Jesus Christ in the Bible. Go to the Scriptures to see Christ as He is described. You do not see Him now, yet you're believing in Him. You're believing in Him. And what? Rejoice. 
with joy. There's an inner joy. A repeated rejoicing with joy that is inexpressible and filled with glory. It's such joy, it's incomprehensible. I I can't explain it. It's inexpressible and it's full of glory. What does that mean? It means in your heart as you're weeping, as you're wondering about the future, and you're asking, why is God allowing this? Why? Why this hard time? Why these difficulties? Why this pain? Why this crisis? You're able to have a heart. I don't understand, Father. But by your grace, we're applauding Christ. We're boasting in the cross. We're boasting in his life, his death, his resurrection. We're celebrating the resurrection. That's what it is. Inexpressible, beyond comprehension, full of glory, full of separation. So, how can you have joy? How can we rejoice with joy? How can you rejoice with joy when you are going through crisis? He tells us here, number one, look, stay focused. Prepare your minds for action and work diligently through Christ. Prepare your minds with action. What you say and think and hear will affect the way you live. So he is saying here, prepare your minds. Look at truth. What is biblical truth about God's sovereignty? That he's in control of your crisis. He understands He's working all of this together for your good and His supreme purpose. Fix your minds on truth of the Scriptures that will lead to action. That will affect the way you work and live through Christ. We've got to have the Word. Are you filling your mind with biblical truth about God, about Christ, about His control? Or are you filling your mind with poison that contradicts Scripture, that brings such confusion as you're going through crisis? Prepare your minds for action. Work diligently that works diligently through Christ. 1 Peter 1.13, 1 Peter 1.13. Therefore, he's going back to what has been said. Therefore, because you're among God's chosen, you're among God's elect, you're among those who are experiencing salvation. Folk, all of that is in these preceding verses. All of this is in the preceding verses. Because you're, you're being saved through Christ. You're being rescued from the family of Satan. You've been brought into the family of God. Therefore, how are we to live? Prepare your minds for action. Stay focused. Secondly, being sober. Minded. Again, going to the mind. What we think, what we say to ourselves, what we hear ourselves say will affect the way we live. Sober minded. Sobriety, sober. What's the opposite? Intoxication. Don't be intoxicated. Don't be controlled by anything or anyone or any substance. Be sober-minded. Under the control of the Holy Spirit. 
being filled with the Holy Spirit. Sober-minded, you're looking to the Scriptures for that which is truth. Folk, are you intoxicated? By drink? By some kind of unhealthy drug? Are you addicted? Pornography? An unhealthy relationship? Are you under the control? Intoxicated? Addicted? To the movies? To the music? To what your culture, our culture is saying to us? Of this is the way you should live? Be sober minded. That's the way to rejoicing with joy. We're being bombarded with poison. That's against scripture. Fix your minds, he says. On Christ, sober-minded, he continues telling us the way to experience joy. Look, thirdly, set your hope fully on the grace that will be brought to you at the revelation of Jesus Christ. So to experience joy and rejoicing and gladness, set your mind on truth. Sober-minded, Thirdly, where is our confidence? Set your hope, set your confidence, set your assurance fully on the grace of Jesus Christ. Folk, to have joy, we need to see the grace of Jesus Christ in three ways. Number one, His grace in the past. It is His grace in that saves. It is by His grace that we can be converted and brought into the family. There's no other way. There's no other way but Christ. Christ obedience. Christ life. Christ death. Christ resurrection. For by grace we're saved through faith and that not of yourselves. We can never be good enough. You can never be good enough to enter God's family. So it's grace in the past. Secondly, it's grace in the present. You and I need grace, His grace today. What is God's grace? Treating us as we do not deserve. Grace is Him welcoming you into your, His family. So grace in the past, grace for today. Is His grace help for today and yes, hope for tomorrow. This future grace. I like Dr. John Piper's zealous, focused teaching on future grace. Lita Heron, such a godly woman, living out on a farm and Tennessee, having some medical background herself, her husband having worked at a Chevrolet dealership, his death, a widow with only one child, Dan. And Dan felt God's calling to go to all places, Uganda, Africa, with his wife and five children. That means Lita's one and only son, one and only child, her five only grandchildren are in Uganda, Africa, and she's in Harriman, Tennessee. What was her response? Thankfulness. Gratitude for God's grace that converts provision for the present and looking to Him for the future. 
was able to talk to her. And then Lita is diagnosed herself. She could have retired from working, but she wanted to keep working to hopefully influence people for Christ, to have additional income that she could help minister to people in her community and to the nations. So here she is, a widow. Her one and only child is in Uganda. Her five grandchildren are in Uganda. She could retire, but she wanted to work to influence people for Christ, to provide greater income for ministry. And she's diagnosed with a brain tumor. She's diagnosed with a brain tumor. And I would talk to her, and her concern was this. She did not want from the medical perspective to start bleeding in her head and severe headaches. That was her desire. She didn't fear death. She knew that through Christ she would go to heaven, but she was hoping that she would not have to go through severe headaches with that brain tumor that would lead to uncontrollable bleeding. She was thankful to Christ for the past. She was thankful to Christ for the present. That her son, she's a widow, her five grandchildren, Uganda, Africa, she's in Harriman, Tennessee. And she looked to Christ for future grace. That she was trusting would be sufficient at the time where the brain tumor would take her life. That's future grace. It's present grace. It's past grace. Where's your hope, fam? Listen, you and your weeping and your difficulties and your pain and your crisis, you can still have an inner rejoicing with joy. As your mind stays focused on Scripture, As you pursue a life of soberness. As you have your confidence fully in Christ. Staying sober, verse 13. Preparing your minds for actions, diligently seeking through Christ. Set your confidence, set your confidence on Christ's grace. Look next. Pursuing a life of holiness. Pursuing a life of holiness through Christ's holiness. That's what it says here in the passage. It's the verses before us. Are you pursuing with sincerity a life of holiness through the holiness of Christ? Now listen, we do not make ourselves holy. You can never, ever be good enough to make yourself holy where God will accept you. It's the holiness of Christ credited to your life. Where God the Father sees you no longer as the rebel we are, the sinners we are by nature. But He sees because He gives us faith and a heart of repentance. If if he's given you and you've responded to a heart of repentance, of turning from sin to Christ, he sees you as holy. Now, folks, this is good news. If you're in Christ, God the Father sees you as holy. As Jesus Christ is holy. Because he is holy, he's called us to a life of holiness. To live out who Christ is. And he's telling us this. Do we fail? Absolutely. Do we sin? Yes. And we cry out, oh Christ, we need you. Forgive us of our sin. Look at 
1 Peter 1, 14 through 16. 14 through 16. As obedient children, you're striving to obey Him, not to earn His love. You can't do it. You can't earn it. But as an outward working, you want to obey Him. Do not be conformed to the passions of your former ignorance. But as He who called you is holy, you also be holy in all of your conduct since it is written, you shall be holy for I am holy. Holy. Made holy in Christ. Are you pursuing a life of holiness? Are you pursuing in all of your thoughts to think biblically? Are you pursuing in all of your words to talk holy talk? Are we pursuing behavior that is like Christ? It's a struggle, family. It's a struggle to think like Christ, to speak holy words that encourage and build up and correct and discipline when needed. How are you doing? How are you doing? Are you listening to holy music? Are you looking and finding your entertainment in holy pictures? And holy conversations? And holy videos? Or are we living, what does he say, in the passions of the past? Are you living The same way you did in the past. How do we live in the past? We lie. We cheat. We deceive. We lust. We have adulterous minds and even behavior. Are you living like you did in the past? Or are, by God's grace, you pursuing holiness? Through the holiness of Christ. Don't live like you did in the past. Those who know you, who really know you, they may not agree with the way you live. They may not agree. They may talk about you and against you. But will they also say, you are really sincere about Christ? They listen to you. They see you out in public. And if they know you, what are they saying about you? They may not like it. They may not agree. But they can say, she's really sincere about her Christ. Or he is. In the way he deals with people and talks to people. Holiness. We do not make ourselves holy. Christ only can make us holy. But if you're made holy in Christ, if you're really His, you're pursuing holiness. Now listen, if you're not, then I think we should question, you should question whether you're in Christ or not, or just deceived, thinking you're His when you're not. Are you pursuing holiness? Why is he telling us these things? So that you can rejoice with joy. That's the motivation, he says. Pursue a healthy fear. Pursue a healthy fear? Yeah, that's what the passage says. What does that mean to have a healthy fear? It means having the greatest reverence for Christ possible. That should be a growing, growing, maturing, greatest reverence, highest respect, deepest awe, 
Yes, yeah, Scripture talks about a holy trembling. A holy, healthy trembling. Again, I say to you, I am thoroughly enjoying the teaching of the late Dr. R.C. Sproul. As I listen to him on my podcast, and Dr. Sproul says, we do not know God. We don't know him in his writings and in his preaching and teaching. We don't know him in his holiness. Joy, absolutely, but a holy trembling before his holiness. A holy trembling. Oh, look at 1 Peter 1.17. 1 Peter 1.17. And if you call on him as father who judges impartially according to each one's deeds, conduct yourselves, how? With fear. A holy reverence. The deepest awe, respect possible. Throughout the time of your difficulty. Notice he's saying that while you're still in exile, while you're still foreigners, you're refugees, you're running for your life. What are they saying about you in your exile? What are they saying as they watch you and listen to you? As they watch you and listen to you? Do they say... You reverence your God. You reverence Jesus Christ. And then lastly, 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 (laughs) to have this joy, this rejoicing with joy. Look at chapter 1, verse 8. Again to verse 8 and verses 18 and 19. There it is, verse 8. Though you have not seen him, you haven't seen him, And yet you love him. And though you do not see, now see him, you believe in him. What? Rejoice with joy that is inexpressible and filled with glory. Now, look at verse 18. Know that you were ransomed from the futile ways inherited from your forefathers, not with perishable things such as silver or gold, but with the precious blood of Christ. What will give you joy? Knowing you are bought, ransomed, purchased into God's family through the blood of Jesus Christ. Whatever crisis Difficulty, hard, hard, painful experiences you're going through. You can say if you're in Christ, you've been bought, you've been ransomed, you've been purchased by the blood of Christ. What does that mean? The Bible says we all, every one of us, have a father, a spiritual father. And Jesus said to some, you are of your father, the devil. You are of your your father, the devil, Satan. Or because of Christ, God himself is your father. See, Christ is the one who purchases who ransoms. The word ransom is used of purchasing a slave. People would go and buy a slave from its slave owner, and that person or persons then become their possession, their slaves. And for the currency, they could use silver, they could use gold, they would use whatever monetary means they used. Jesus says something has happened. You're no longer a slave, a son, a daughter of the devil. But you're now 
a slave to Christ, a slave of righteousness, a slave of holiness. And what did it cost to purchase you if you're in Him? His blood. Not silver, not gold that perishes, but the very precious blood of Christ. Folk, that will give us joy. Father, this is hard. I've never been through a crisis like this. Is this what it means to follow you? I didn't know you were going to take us here. I didn't know you were going to allow this. This is hard. But I'm yours. You're mine. You've bought us through the blood of your son. You're a good father. You're a good father. You've bought us by your blood. That's what we're celebrating again this morning. Hopefully you're celebrating it every day in your heart. But we're about to invite all of you who are in Christ to come celebrate the body of Christ, the blood of Christ that he gave to purchase us. For all in good standing, either in this or another congregation, you've gone before the leadership of this or another congregation of like-mindedness. And you're turning from your sin. You're pursuing holiness through Christ's holiness. Come eat and drink with us. Again, we're so thankful for Pastor Slattery and his family who's le- who have led us. And now Pastor Hunter, Will's father. Both Slattery, Hunter, both pastors will come in just a moment to let us eat and drink, and celebrate Christ. Let's pray. Father, we want to applaud Christ. We want to boast in Him. Thank You. Teach us truth that will set us free and use us to faithfully, powerfully teach these truths to others, to believe them, to live them, to share them in Your Son, in Christ. Amen.